Okay, hi guys, and welcome to the show. Today, I'm gonna to do top 10 everyday dress watches under $500. Last time we did divers, we've done chronographs, we've done pilot watches, but strangely enough, I haven't ever done dress watches, so I thought I'd address that uh, today. Now, of course, I'll do wristwatch check before I get into this video, and I'm wearing the Laurier. Yep, still besotted with it, <laughs> what can I say? Um, it, I, it's a favorite release of this year without a shadow of a doubt. It's gorgeous. The, the little arrow hand, 39 millimeters, automatic. Yeah, I reviewed it, I don't know, a couple of weeks ago now, so I have a look back. A uh, quick disclaimer before uh, we go through the watches. This is, of course, my own top 10. I'm sure a lot of you will go, oh, what about this watch? What about... Guys, to be honest, you know I could do this for hours. There's hundreds of watches. This is my personal top 10. And also, I only ever talk about watches that I've had personal, uh, extensive experience with. I know there tends to be this trend on YouTube of talking about watches they've never even handled, or even worse than that, trashing watches you've never handled in the flesh. Feel free to nominate your own uh, favorites top 10 in the uh, comments below. So, without further ado, let's crack on. Number 10. German made, this is the Graf Zeppelin uh, Hindenburg Swiss Quartz Moon Phase Calendar Dress Watch. I actually did review this donkeys ago. This is a stainless steel watch, but you can get it in a variety of, there's a gold tone one, there's a, a silver dial, which I think actually offsets the moon phase a little bit more uh, than the blue dial. Don't get me wrong, the blue dial is exquisite. We have very classic 1920s numerals, V-shaped layouts to the sub-dials. So this is a, a retro style moon phase. We have that radiant blue, that's probably my pick of the bunch. Poire for the, for the owl hands, very elegant. And this watch really demonstrates something that all the watches we have, well most of them, I, I've yeah, I think nine out of 10 of the watches I'm talking about today have. And that is, I've picked them because they look more expensive than they are. They're very classic, very tastefully done. Zeppelin is owned by Point Tech. Uh, they actually own the sister brand as well, Junkers, which we'll talk about a little, little bit further on down the list. It's 30 meters water resistant, moon phase at the six o'clock with that bosom cut window. Hesselite domed crystal, this is a 40 millimeter watch, only 10 millimeters thin. It's a very slender and perfect for sliding under the cuff. It is quite a complications heavy watch. Uh, probably the most of all the, the watches in my personal top 10. Definitely is a great conversation piece. We have a pusher at the four o'clock for setting some of the features. It's powered by Swiss made Ronda, the, despite the, the watch actually being made in Germany and you will be impressed at the quality of these. You, trust me, you will. It comes with a, a, a wonderfully paired leather strap. These are actually handmade straps as well, so the quality extends to all aspects of this watch. Astonishingly, this only costs $329, well, at the time of this uh, video, at least. Handsome, elegant, classy, classic, everything you want in a dress watch, not to mention all the extra date, day, complications and even an extra hand to indicate the number of the week which is um, not something you see every day but I think you know really utilizes a, a solid uh, Swiss quartz there perfectly and obviously the name uh, Graf Zeppelin refers to that romantic age well actually not only the name the aesthetic to those beautiful majestic uh, flying ships from Germany, of course. Number nine. The first Swiss entry in my top 10, and it is, of course, Swatch. You guys know if you've been following me for long enough, you know I'm a big Swatch fan. I do collect, I have a couple of my own collection, uh, a couple of rare pieces as well, which don't laugh, I actually keep in the safe. But anyway, Swatch was started in 1983. It was an attempt by the Swiss. Their answer to the, the quartz crisis, they want something affordable. Swatch, it's an amalgamation of a second watch. A lot of people think it actually means Swiss watch, but actually it's second watch. The whole point of it was to have something very affordable, have fun with, match your outfit, um, usually quartz. But actually this, believe it or not, is an automatic. We are talking about the body and soul 
Uh, it comes on a leather strap. This is the YAS100D. This was released last year in 2017. Now I saw this on the wrist of a friend of mine um, and I, I thought it was something completely different uh, and I was instantly intrigued. I asked them what it was and it was, of course, a swatch. It's 30 meters water resistant, comes on this kind of lizard grain leather strap, which I, th I think just offsets it beautifully. It has mineral crystal, it's a 38 millimeter size, which is just perfect. But this is the real treat. You get a display back and in there you see an ETA automatic, a 21 joule movement. I'm pretty sure it's the 2842. You don't get any decoration or anything like that. Very, very basic. But it's an automatic nonetheless and it's $115. So when I saw it on the wrist of a friend, uh, I begged them to, to, you know, if I could borrow it for a review, I might just end up buying it and reviewing it. It's, it's a cracking piece. It's skeletonized, you can enjoy, you, you get to see the actual barrel spring and the escapement and the inner workings. Uh, it's rather abstract, it's, it's not the, the most illegible when it comes to telling the time, but it's fun and it's stylish, something a little bit uh, for a bit of pizzazz. Um, but guys, you don't have to go for this particular version. What I love about Swatch is that there's so many fun, there's a whole myriad, a plethora, a never-ending amount of, uh, of amazing affordable quartz watches that start from you know under 50 all the way up to 100 and then you have automatic pieces nowadays as well. Buy a whole bunch of them for under $500, match them to your outfit. Now, I think they're really, really stylish and cool and fun. They're fun, guys. They're very enjoyable and that's what it's all about at the end of the day number eight another swiss piece this time a little bit more and i was considering putting the tissot viso date in this spot but i wanted to keep the list to just one of each brand because otherwise it will be predominantly seiko tissot uh, and quite a few hamiltons i would imagine as well you know i want to give space to more brands. But it is a Tissot, and this time I went for the T Classic Automatic, the Leloc Powermatic 80. Now, if you remember the last list, I included a, a diver, one of their new divers with the Powermatic 80 movement. This has been what's called the, the silent revolution in affordable watchmaking. It's basically, they, they took an ETA, they gave it a new spring barrel, boosted its power reserve to 80 hours. They put in a high-tech escapement that requires no regulation. You can't regulate it. It's done all at the factory with a laser. A very, very precise performing piece. It's also made out of a new alloy. It's, I think it's called RCAP, which is basically a copper, nickel, and zinc uh, alloy. Very anti-magnetic, making sure it's, it's performance and longevity. And thus you get this 80-hour power reserve. It's very, very impressive. Now, I reviewed the chronometer version. This is the more affordable, uh, the entry level. Waffle dial, Roman numerals, you can get various colored dials, etc. I really like the rose gold PVD finish. I think it's very elegant. Tissot, as you guys know, is a legendary Swiss brand, founded all the way back in 1850. Three, and I've, I've talked a great deal like they, uh, about them because of their rich horological history, their involvement with Amiga and Le Mania with the chronographs in the 1930s. Earlier, they were the first in the world to mass produce affordable Swiss made pocket watches. There wouldn't have been Swatch and, and a lot of the technology that Swatch, especially the System 51, etc. A lot of it came from the, the experience and uh, innovations of, of Tissot. Tissot in a way are kind of the, how would you describe this? That the muscle, the horological muscle behind the Swatch group certainly with a lot of their uh, more affordable innovations when it comes to movements. So very tastefully done, very classic, 39 millimeters, an astonishing 9.75 millimeters tall. So perfect for, you know, sliding under the cuff again. You get the date, you get beautiful, very, very stylish leaf hands. It has that timeless look. You also get the display back, so you get to enjoy that movement. Wonderful watch. Oh, and sapphire crystals. So um, it's quite a tough cookie uh, as well. Number seven. Federic Constant. Now, I've been talking about this brand quite a lot in the recent months. I actually reviewed this particular watch. This is their classic index. Since that review, the, the, the price is bubbling up just over the $500 mark. 
However, they do offer a, a very nice selection of even more affordable quartz based pieces. So Frédéric Constant, their relatively new brand, Swiss of course, uh, founded in Geneva. In recent years, they were bought by Citizen. What they have been working on, a lot of their own in-house calibers, tourbillons, their list of achievements in this relatively short time is astounding, very, very impressive. Okay, so you're not gonna get in any of the in-house calibers, but you are gonna get the caliber FC303, which is basically an ETA2824. An extremely conservative aesthetic, very reminiscent of the Patek Calatravas. You don't have to go that route. There are various versions with Romans, different color dials, finishes, etc. Now, I have reviewed this particular model. I'll leave a link, have a look back. Uh, I think for the money, it's a very good deal and highly overlooked. So we get sapphire glass there. These are 40 millimeters, only 10 millimeters thick. Perfect for dressing up. 50 meters re water resistant. We get a date, applied b batons on the dial, etc. And they include that, uh, what was it called? The, the smart band or smart strap? Or, no, e-strap, that was it, yeah. It coordinates with your phone. It's like a Fitbit, essentially. But also check out their Slimline collection. These are amazingly slender because obviously they're quartz based, only 5.9 millimeters thick. Back in the day, as I've said hundreds of times, before the quartz crisis, a real sign of watchmaking prowess. The companies would compete to have the thinnest watches, uh, the manual wind, you saw the micro rotors, you saw very, very slim. This was obviously 50s, 60s, etc. That was the trend. Quartz kind of <laughs> destroyed all that, but you get something like this that has very kind of breguet aesthetic, breguet hands, beautiful um, guilloche dial, 39 millimeters. It is actually a Ronda 1019. And these are about 400, 300, 400, something like that. Again, you get a nice variety of choices on the finish and uh, colors, etc. My favorite aspect of these watches is they do kind of exude that mid-century classicism and style. Again, they look far more expensive than they actually are. Put a lovely crocodile strap on it and you will feel like a million dollars. Number six, an old favorite brand of ours, it is of course Hamilton. They were started in 1892, became part of the Swatch Group in 1984. So they were actually predominantly American for the most of their existence. They are one of the kings in this price range because of, well, their list of achievements, not only in sheer number of iconic watches they've produced, but also they've been in over 400 films. And when it comes to value for money, it's very difficult to beat. I would have loved to put the Intramatic here, but unfortunately they're creeping into the $600 range. But my choice is a very overlooked piece. This is the Valiant. We have those trademark style cues that is just so quintessentially Hamilton, those curvy lugs, rather surprising Lance style hands, beautiful sunburst silver dial, Romans, very classic, very plain, minimalist, 50 meters water resistant, scratch resistant sapphire. This has the caliber H10 inside, which is basically based on the ETA 2824. Hamilton actually modified this. Uh, they slowed down the, the, the frequency. It operates at a 21,600 vibrations an hour, boosted the power reserve as well. An impressive 80 hours. Also the slower speed, its longevity is boosted because obviously less friction on the moving parts. So it's 40 millimeters, a little bit thicker, 12 millimeters. We don't get the display back. We get a nod to the old classic watches of the mid-century by Hamilton with this beautiful engraved coat of arms, which you don't really see Hamilton doing uh, that often. That This came out in 2017. I was due to review it. Unfortunately, I chose to do the review of the field watch. I simply can't review all the watches, but if I get my hands on this again, I will do a full review. Very restrained, uh, conservative aesthetic will make it absolute strap monster. And the price is around about 400. Um, certainly you can find it under $500, so, um, yeah, maybe the secret is out. Number five, the most iconic watch of the entire list. It is 
the Max Bill by Young Hands. Now, Young Hands, if you're not familiar with them, I have actually reviewed the Anthracite manual. Was it manual wind or automatic? I forget, but have a look back. Uh, Young Hands is Germany's largest watchmaker. They were founded all the way back in 1861. The Max Bill is without a doubt their most iconic watch, and it's famous as the name implied, because it was designed by the legendary Swiss artist Max Bill. Now, you're not going to get the manual wind or the automatic, but you can get the quartz version. This is a lovely size, 38 millimeters, 30 meters of water resistance. This is, of course, stainless steel. Uh, well, all the watches today are stainless steel, but I just have to uh, make sure I mention that. Acrylic crystal. My favorite is the beige one. The black dial as well. You can get a variety of different strap combinations. There are luminous markers on this. This watch isn't necessarily important uh, for the, 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 the watchmaking involved. I mean, inside we've got one of my favorite uh, affordable ETAs. It's the 955112. You get the end of life indicator, which I always like. And about, I think about 108 months of battery life, which is very substantial. So it's a great solid ETA, but you're not buying it for the, the movement, you're buying it really because it's a design icon. And it's a shame it's taken for granted these days because every single fashion watch has ripped off this original design. And when I did the review, somebody asked the question, well, what makes this real Bauhaus and something not? This was personally designed by Max Bill himself. It's done in accordance with the theories of his teaching. Now, he's an artist, he's an architect, a painter, an industrial designer, the, the all-round Bauhaus polymath, of course, a graduate of the famous Bauhaus school in Germany. But beyond that, afterwards, he went into teaching. And a lot of his theories, a lot of the mathematical thinking and reasoning behind the spacing and everything has gone into this design. So it's, it's very subtle, but it's a big difference. These are very faithful to the originals and that's why they're a little bit more expensive, but worth it because whenever I see anybody wearing a Max Bill, you know they know their stuff when it comes to design and it's just good taste. Bauhaus design in particular lends itself perfectly to dress watches because of that understated look. It just adds an element of class, epitomizes everything a dress watch should encompass. And despite the domed acrylic glass, it's only eight millimeters uh, tall, which is Beautiful, lovely, slender, perfect for dressing up. Being Bauhaus with the ultra modern minimalism, it's a strap monster. It's going to be extremely versatile dressing it up, dressing it down. Just looks great with everything. The Max Bill is just a smidgen under $500. Number four. Sticking with the Bauhaus uh, style, this is from Junkers. Now, we mentioned uh, Graf Zeppelin earlier. This is Zeppelin's sister brand. The brand is obviously named after the iconic and hugely influential uh, German aircraft maker. Have I reviewed this? Uh, I'm pretty sure, no, 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 I reviewed just the standard date version. This, however, has a power reserve and a 24-hour sub-dial. This is, of course, the Bauhaus Automatic 6060-2, exactly $500. Now, this is what I call Bauhaus inspired. At the 12 o'clock, we got a beautiful little power reserve. At the 6, we have a 24-hour sub-dial. Uh, you can get this in the black dial. There's a cream dial as well. We do get luminescence on the hands. Very simple baton hands. Uh, inside we get a 26 Joule Citizen. This is the uh, Miyota 9132. Very solid, great movement. Operates at actually 28,800 vibrations an hour. So you get a very nice smooth sweep. 40 hour power reserve. 40 millimeter and only 11 millimeters thick, which is still relatively nice and slender. 30 meters water resistant. Uh, and I hate to, I hate to stereotype, but it, it is that solid uh, quality German made product at the end of the day. It has amazing value for money, especially considering the quality, the practicality of the added complications. You do get a display back, although the Miyota isn't much to look at. Um, at least if you're just getting into automatic pieces, you get to enjoy a little bit of that uh, magic. Number three. To another uh, mid-century inspired piece, but more on the American side of things. This is the Timex Marlin hand winding, uh, the reissue of the famous 
60s. I have it somewhere. I should have brought it, but it's not here. But I have the original uh, from the 60s. Now, those had the pin and plate movements in it. However, this has the Seagull ST6. A lot of people were kind of a, a little bit um, critical of it, but actually, if you compare it to the pin and plate movements of the originals, they're far better because at least you can repair them. Now, this was a very daring step for, for Timex. Now, Timex is an ancient company uh, from, well, ancient in terms of <laughs> watch brands, from 1854. They have an amazing horological history like no other. I Well, have a look at the Marlin video. I go into their history. It's fascinating. There is even a Timex museum in the United States. Now, what made this so daring was this was released last year and you never really get to see 34 millimeter watches being released, but the hype was incredible. I, uh, they sold out immediately. People were flogging them on, on eBay for like $800. It was utterly ridiculous, <laughs> rather amusing. We have that very classic champagne uh, sunburst dial, very 60s markers at the 12, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. Simple no date, acrylic uh, crystal, 30 meters water resistant, very slender 10.5 millimeters thick. And it's great to see that Timex are, you know, making mechanical watches again. It's been long overdue. Let's hope they do the same thing with some of their dive watches and, and their field watches in particular. That, that would be amazing. So Timex, if you're listening, this became certainly one of the, the most interesting releases of last year. A big success for Timex. In fact, they, they, they went on to, to, to continue production. But at first glance, you wouldn't be able to, well, apart from it being brand new, you wouldn't be able to tell. The modern Marlin is almost indistinguishable at first glance to its ancestors. And the feeling it gives, I mean, it's, it's, so, it's just evocative of that entire age. They really did it fantastically well this reissue number two we couldn't do this list without talking about the orient bambino i mean it's been a favorite of the channel it's been a favorite well amongst uh, watch enthusiasts worldwide and for good reason too a wonderful selection of different versions they're now in their fifth generation the current one has the sub seconds on the dial. We have a new movement, the F6T22, uh, which is an in-house automatic caliber, hacking, manual wind, everything. It, I think it's only the first generation that had the more um, rudimentary movement without hacking manual wind, but I actually personally the first generation is my favorite. They were a little bit more kind of 1930s style with the Romans, etc. Then they moved into more kind of Bauhaus, I think with the third generation. The second generation was very kind of 60s. And then this final one is, is kind of more 50s, I would say. Arabic numerals and, and beautiful applied markers. You get them in uh, tons of colors, blacks, cream dials, uh, rose gold tone, uh, domed hard mineral, the date at the three o'clock. These are 40 millimeters. That is my only criticism. If they were 38, I would still own one today. A little bit too big for me. They are about 12 millimeters. Not, not super slender, but you know, it is an automatic. You have the rotor and obviously the domed crystal there. Orient are fantastic. They've been going since the 50s. They are owned by the Seiko group, I think. It's very, very difficult to beat. Certainly when it comes to the price, uh, the older previous generations, you can pick them up for just over $100, about 150 bucks, which is the bargain of the century. There's always a, a, a staggering amount of attention to detail with the, with the Bambino. Each generation had their own set of hands to, to different dials. For under $200, I mean, <laughs> you can see why I put them at number two, right? Number one probably guessed it, it's sitting right here. Even though it has been discontinued, it is the Seiko Saab 033. They are still selling. Uh, they haven't sold out yet. By the time you're watching this, it could have happened. So I've come up with some uh, affordable alternatives from Seiko. But let's just go over the Saab 033. So it's a 38 millimeter. We get sapphire glass. Uh, these are creeping towards the $500 mark. 100 meters water resistant, you get the uh, 6R15, which is just an amazing, amazing uh, Seiko movement. Display back so you get to enjoy it. A staggering amount of attention to detail, that little 
seconds hand with the kind of sewing needle, seconds hand, the Dauphine hands, you get Luminova. Extremely luxurious, high quality finishing on the case, variation on the surfaces. It has been nicknamed the baby Grand Seiko, or Grand Seiko on a budget, and, and justifiably so. It's it's of a, a, a luxury standard, it really is. The movement operates at the slower speed, you get that boosted 50 plus hours. I've got way more than 50 hours of power reserve on mine. You know, even a signed crown, I, I just love it. Uh, it is 11 millimeters thick, and you can get the 35, which is the cream dial. Those are starting to get a little bit difficult to get. Very, very versatile when it comes to dressing it up. It's an absolute strap monster. You can dress it up, dress it down. It looks good on a NATO, on a, on a leather strap. Anything and everything, it really does. This is my wife's now and I still borrow it uh, on weekends. If you want some Japanese alternatives that are around about the same price, have a look at the SARY057. At first glance, it looks just like a Saab 033. However, this has the FR36, so we get a day date. Uh, still again with the display back, this time with a lovely gold rotor. Uh, it's a slightly bigger 41 millimeter size and about, I think it's about 12 millimeters thick. Still 100 meters water resistant. This is the entry level to the Presage line. You can get these for around about three to four hundred dollars. We don't get as much refinement and uh, you know details as the legendary Saab 033, but it's a good alternative, and I think this is probably going to take its place as the Saab skyrockets, just as all you know a lot of Saabs have done in the past. Another one to look at is the cocktail time. However, those are creeping over the $500 mark, but you might just get lucky. So have a look around. Essentially under the hood, the same as the Saab 033, although with that stunning aqua blue sunburst effect dial with the with amazing texture. Now, if you can't find that, you can find a very similar dial, although a little bit darker in tone, well, much darker, Seiko Presage SRPB41. Here we have the FR35 again, hacking, many wind, all the rest of it. These are stunning. I mean, you get these arrowhead markers. These are 40.5 millimeters in diameter, 11 millimeters, 0.8 thick. Hard lex crystal this time, so you don't get the sapphire, but you do get that incredible dial. It's beguiling, utterly beguiling. Date at the uh, three comes on a more of Jubilee-esque style bracelet rather than the oyster style of the previous and this is colloquially known as the blue moon and I, well you can see why so that is around about four hundred dollars and again it, okay it's a little bit more like the cocktail time and less like the Saab but these these domestic model uh, Japanese made Seikos they have a consistent quality to them and that is why they are my number one not only in design but in, in the actual fit and finish, very difficult to beat, guys. So that is why they're my number one. I kind of cheated. I had a bit of a selection for you at number one. Okay, guys, I'm going to leave it there. Please don't forget to add your nominations and suggestions in the comments below. Which do you think is the best everyday dress watch in this price range? Thank you very, very much for watching. Please don't forget to like this video if you enjoyed it and found it useful. And as always, guys, I will catch you in the next one. Okay, ciao.